Okay, welcome to class number two, Spherical and Plane Mirrors. Sorry about the video format, but hopefully we can stay caught up with the snow cancellations that we've had to deal with. So today we're going to cover some examples of image formation by spherical mirrors. Look at how lens and mirrors can combine and then cover plane mirrors at the end of this. We'll have a few examples. We have a few clicker questions. Hopefully the video format doesn't change how those operate too much. I will leave you some time to pause the video, think about your answer, maybe discuss it if you're watching this with a group of other peers and classmates. I encourage you to do that. I know it's not always possible. You may be stuck uh, somewhere that you can't drive out of, but if you can get together, it'd be a good way to study together uh, and simulate the class experience as much as we can. We've talked on the first day of class, on last Tuesday, uh, about image formation by spherical mirrors. And again, we mentioned that the Vergence equation works for mirrors just like it did for lenses. So the only change, and it's not really a change, it's just the fact that we have to keep in mind the sign convention is incredibly important. It was important before, uh, but it's a little tricky now, again, because the light reflects off of a mirror. So V equals U plus P. Still the most important equation of the year, and by year we mean the whole school year, not just last semester, so you'll see it a lot again this semester as well. The sign convention, we introduced this last class, is again positive downstream direction is opposite for the incident and the light exiting the mirror. So basically what we're saying is the light reflects off of a mirror, which you presumably already knew, but the downstream direction changes when that reflection happens. So, upstream and downstream have a certain direction for the incoming light, and then they're reversed for the exiting light because the light has reflected. So downstream always means the way the light's flowing, and upstream always means against the way the light is flowing, but the light changes its direction with the mirror. So again, that's the, the central part of our sign convention for mirrors. Now something to keep in mind is that the center of curvature of a mirror is associated with the incident light. So if we're asking about a positive or negative center of curvature, or excuse me, a radius of curvature, then we're referring to the direction the light is going before it hits the mirror. That would be the incident light. The focal point of a mirror is associated with the exiting light, or the flow of light after it hits the mirror. And again, incident light and exiting light have a different flow, have a different direction because of the reflection. So you can kind of conclude from that, and we've, we've shown it uh, in the first class period and did some clicker questions on it, that the focal length and the radius of curvature have opposite signs. That's because, again, because that light is changing direction upon reflection. So we see that in this equation here at part one. Uh, that f equals minus r over 2. The focal point is half the radius of curvature, and it has a negative sign. So the radius of curvature and the focal length are always opposite signed. The power is our same definition as before, that n over f. Uh, so again, power in, in diopters is the index of refraction divided by the focal length of the mirror. Uh, and, and again, the focal length, there's only one focal point, f1 and f2 are coincident for spherical mirrors, simplifies some things, uh, especially the ray tracing. And the second part of this sign convention is the object and image distances. Again, now u and v, little u and little v, are the object and image distances respectively. u is associated with the incident light. Again, the object, same thing, the object distance, little u, is associated with incident light because that incident light is coming from the object. Little v, the image distance, is associated with the exiting light. Again, makes sense because the image is what's formed by the exiting light. Um, there's a quick summary here for a real object and a positive concave mirror. Uh, and there are three cases. Again, you don't necessarily need to memorize these. These should be sort of uh, things that you can kind of derive uh, either from ray tracing or from some of the, the Virgin's equation calculations. Uh, but it's certainly a good uh, thing to check your understanding of why, why are these cases true. And it's a good thing to study again, sort of lay out a test case 
drop an image, pick a power, pick a center of curvature, uh, and then place an object and, and determine what uh, properties you're going to see for the image. For example, for an object distance that is between the uh, center of curvature, C, and the focal point F, again, the object that's between C and F, will have an image that's real, inverted, and magnified. Uh, if the object is outside of the center of curvature or farther away from the mirror than the center of curvature is, then it will have a real inverted uh, reduced image. And finally, if the Im object is inside the focal length, then you will have a virtual upright and magnified image. So again, for a concave mirror, that's a positive mirror, which tends to uh, focus light, I want to delete that. <clears throat> this is for a um, real object and a positive concave mirror. Uh, there's also a summary for a real object and a negative or convex mirror. And that is very simple. Any object distance will result in a virtual, upright, and reduced image. And you can imagine uh, with a few quick ray tracing sketches why that's the case. If you have a real object, and as the light comes in and hits that negative convex mirror, uh, clearly the rays will all be uh, diverging more. Uh, and so the only way that that could form an image would be a virtual image. Uh, and it happens that virtual image will always be upright and reduced. So the table, the, the kind of table of cases is very straightforward for a negative mirror. Uh, and then there's three special cases depending on the object location for a positive concave mirror. Clicker question number three. The system shown below is initially in air. If the entire system is immersed in a material that has an index of refraction n equals two, the object divergence, blank, the focal length, blank, and the power, blank. So we've got five choices. Doubles, stays the same, or doubles. Again, the object divergence does something, the focal length does something, and the power does something. Choose the best of those five. Here's a chance to pause while you think about your answer. Okay, let's take a look at the answer. Again, if you're watching with others, go ahead and take a minute to discuss your answers and see if you can come to agreement uh, or perhaps change each other's minds. All right, so again, we're looking at what happens for the object divergence, what happens to the focal length, and what happens to the power if this entire system is immersed in a material that has an index of refraction n equals 2. Basically comparing what if it's in air versus what if it's in an index of refraction n equals 2 medium. And so we basically need to think about which of these quantities depend on index of refraction. The virgins, the focal length, or the power. So think about the virgins. The definition of the virgins includes the index of refraction. And again, it's n over uh, little u. And so the object divergence is going to double if the index of refraction doubles. The focal length does not depend on the index of refraction and will, in fact, stay the same. The power is defined as index of refraction over the focal length. And so since the focal length didn't change, but the index, of course, does, then the power also doubles. Again, this is just sort of uh, some review of the properties of those definitions. If we want to think about it more conceptually, what happens when you change the index of refraction is you change the way the waves travel. And so the waves travel, their curvature changes, which means vergence and power, those sorts of things change because those deal with the wave fronts. The focal length is purely determined geometrically relative to the center of curvature. And no matter what medium you have this um, mirror in, the focal point is going to be the same. We're not physically bending the mirror, we're just putting it in a different material. So again, the focal length does not change with, with material or with the medium, uh, but vergence and power both do. Clicker question number four. The system shown below is initially in air. If the entire system is immersed in a material that has an index of refraction n equals 2, the image distance, blank, and the image vergence, blank. So we want to decide how the image distance changes and how the image vergence changes. Pick from the best of the four answers. 
Okay, let's take a look at the answer. Again, if you're watching with others, go ahead and take a minute to discuss your answers and see how you agree or disagree. All right, for this question, we're looking at how the image distance and the image vergence change if we immerse the system in a material that has an index of refraction n equals 2. So again, looking at how image distance and vergence depend on index of refraction. So the image distance located uh, by the, the inverted gray arrow, in fact, stay the same because we know that both vergence for the object, the object vergence, the image vergence, and the power all depend on index of refraction in the same way. So if the object doesn't move, which it wouldn't if we just simply put this in a different material, then all those quantities change, but the locations do not. So the image distance stays the same. Of course, the image vergence, which is defined as n over little v, would double because n has doubled. So the answer is b, that the image distance stays the same, but the image vergence doubles. So we'll take this first example where we consider a concave mirror with a radius of curvature of 30 centimeters and a real object 55 centimeters in front of the mirror. All right, we can use our equations, f is equal to minus r over two, and p is equal to n over f. Now, when we plug in the radius of curvature, we have to use the right sign. So let's remember that when we have a mirror, this is a concave mirror, and a center of curvature, and a focal point, the center of curvature is measured relative to the incoming light. So if light's incoming this way, we see the center of curvature is actually upstream from the mirror, so it's going to be negative. So R is actually negative 30 centimeters, which when we plug into our equation, F is going to be negative, negative 30 centimeters, right? Those are going to cancel out, give us a 15 centimeter focal length. So that's our, our first question. Then the power of the mirror, of course, is just n over f, or 1 over 15 centimeters. We've got to do that in meters to have our power in diopters, which is uh, 6.7 diopters. So we have a focal length of 15 centimeters and a power of 6.7 diopters. We can also find the image vergence and the image distance, again, so for this is for B. For uh, the image vergence, V is equal to U plus P, so we can plug those in. Our object distance is 55 centimeters, so we have 1 over 0 0.55. We need